Hey guys, welcome back to the 7 Day 7 channel. Um, we have a new mascot for the channel, so let me uh, just introduce him. Uh, hang on a second. Oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. All right, there she is. All right. She's just a little fella. <laughs> All right guys, so um, this is the FX79. We're gonna go through this model, go through some of the points about it and why I bought it. I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay guys, so this is the FX79. Um, now, as a lot of you guys know, I have the FX61, which is the 61 inch version of this. 79 refers to the wing length, and it is 79 inches wide, which is close to two meters. So I think, yeah, it is two meters actually. So why did I buy this airplane? Number one, I've been obsessing over this airplane for about a year and a half or so. I've always wanted the FX79 Buffalo. Um, I've always admired large wings, and I, since I had the 61, I've always been thinking about this one because it's got really big bays and everything. Economics was a big factor as well. This went on sale. Um, these are normally $245 and went on sale on Banggood for $145, so that's $100 savings right there. I had a 20% off coupon, which made it um, $110, and that was shipped. Shipping this big of an airplane to you would cost you about 40 to 50 bucks, so you figure I basically, not including shipping, it would have cost me $50 to $60 uh, the cost of the plane, so I couldn't say no. Um, so let's go through this real quick. Um, so actually, I've heard that the FX-79 wings are the same as the wings from the FX-61. It's just it has a, a very large center section. Now, the wings are removable, which is also great. You know, you wonder, well, how do you get this giant airplane uh, moved around? But you can take off the both wings here, obviously, at the seam here. The uh, vertical stabs here, they stay on to the main section. Um, you... Your servo, which is mounted right about here, comes through and there's a cable that goes right through here where, where, you, where you do your disconnection. Um, let's take a look at the insides here. So basically there's these two snaps that hold this down. I'm going to, um, I'm going to see if I can prop this phone up right here as I'm pulling this off. Hopefully I can. All right, so what you want to do is hold your hand down like this. You don't want to put your fingertips down because you'll make indentations in the foam. I learned this from my FX61. You basically push down on your hand and pop this up. It's going to probably shake my phone down. There we go. Let me just take this off and I'll show you what's going on in the inside here. All right, so there is the giant lid. Here's the giant bay. You can see I could pretty much get my whole entire hand and my forearm inside this thing. It is that big. So I'm planning on running uh, two of the 5200 uh, milliamp um, multi-star packs in here. Um, so you have your bays here. One is going to be for your receiver. You take this off. I'm going to do the little modification where you put the little um, pieces of plastic sticking out so you can just slot this in here and you don't have to worry about taping this down or anything. VTX is probably going to go over here on this side. So those are two little hatches that you can... Um, you can um, utilize for whatever you want to put in them. GPS, whatever you want. Now this is the back section where we're going to glue in the motor mount. The motor mount looks just like this and I believe it goes in something like that. Uh, this is the plastic one. Um, luckily when I was at the uh, AMA show down in Ontario, um, I got the metal one. Where'd my metal one go? Hang on a second guys. Yeah, so luckily when I was at the AMA show, um, Terry from CNC, Small Part CNC, was actually at the show and he had one of these on hand. So I went ahead and bought the aluminum motor mount, which is going to replace the stock one, and it will not break, which is nice. So that's going to sit right there, and this will be glued in just like that, and then we'll have our motor mount that looks so beautiful. So I do know from my FX61 that these lips here are a little bit big and what I had to do is uh, because of the size of my motor I had to like cut out right here and through here it would allow the motor wires to come through so uh, that might be a modification you, might, you guys might want to think about and going to the front here 
We've got this large section here. They recommend gluing this in, but I am probably going to end up just taping it in. Now it has a nice hole in the center here for an FPV camera. I may put it there or I might insert it up here. Not quite sure, but you can see here. I'm going to take this off. How big this is. And it's got the... Um, the little tabs that just line straight up so this there's no way of getting this wrong it doesn't shake around too much at all so has a little spot here for a gopro camera that's the exact size of an old gopro camera because this this model's got to be about five years old actually but because it flies so well it's got a huge following so this foam here is just thick and dense enough that you can pretty much carve out whatever you want let's say if you wanted to put a uh, pen and tilt on here you can insert that in here very very easily all right let's uh let's get this bad boy flipped over let me see if i can put this in the tripod and same thing if you're going to be snapping this out, i would put your hand underneath here and just push down to get both of those snaps in i'll go ahead and put the motor mount off to the side um have some really nice hand holds on the bottom here for uh when you want to do overhand tosses i don't recommend it uh, because uh i always do side arm launches which are going to be basically holding it just like Andrew Newton does. I'm glad he uses the same technique that I've always used. But uh, with my FX70, with my FX61, um, there's a hole in the bottom here which is catches your middle finger. So basically I'm going to hold it like this. I'm probably going to put some grip tape right here so I can actually have a nice firm grip. But you basically go about three-quarter throttle, come back like this, and your wings can go just over the top of your head. This is nice because as you go forward, your hand just slips off and you don't rotate the airplane. So if you throw it sometimes radially, sometimes people throw it from the wing, you basically get this radial action going in and you get a weird uh, toss and it's not good. Sometimes you crash. So let's take a look at the bottom here. I'll just leave you guys in the um, tripod there. Um, I did the same thing that Newton did, Andrew Newton, is I hot glued uh, the, the, the main spar in. I'll probably use hot glue for most of the things like he did just to get a quick build going. I'm not going to do any long range FPV with this to begin with. I'm probably going to stay semi short range around Kite Hill. Um, but you can see that it has pockets for your uh, flaps and also ailerons. I'm not planning on running flaps. Most people don't as well because when you come in for a landing, if these are cocked down or if they're positioned down, cocked down, um, the ground can come up and just strip your servo off. So um, I know a lot of guys will run this as well. They can actually can pop the servos through and run the control portions of this servo on the top of the wing. It upsets the laminar airflow a little bit, but it's much better, I think, than running them on the bottom and um, possibly getting um, hit by something uh, on the grass. But I have my FX61, I have mine run on the bottom. I just made some little EPP ramps here. So I, so if it does hit anything, it, it bumps the, uh, the servo arm out of the way. So the guys, uh, the wings are attached by screws. There's a, a pinch screw here that this bar slides into this bar and that pinches it together here. There's also a screw that goes through this piece panel of wood here that inserts into the main wing here. And there is uh, the the dots here, which is supposed to be for the, um, the CG. Sorry, I have um, hot glue on here. But everyone says put the CG on the, uh, the bolt head, which is right here, which is about a, an inch forward. I think Andrew Newton, he didn't really use say what, where exactly his um, CG was. I think he said it was at 100 millimeters. Let me see where that ends up being. If you guys haven't checked out Andrew Newton's channel, most of you have, but if you haven't, check it out. He's, he's one of the best channels on YouTube. Oh no, it wasn't 100 millimeters. Let's see here. So the bolt hole is 83.6 millimeters and the uh, raised portion here is 100 millimeters. So I think Andrew end, ended up going to, at 100 millimeters. So maybe he was on that um, that um, raised portion here. All right, so here's a bit of a funny story. So um, I had a motor for this, ready to go. And uh, I thought I had a motor ready to go. It, uh, it was a motor that I used previously for my FX61. So I thought, oh great, I've got a motor. I can't find it. So either I gave it away to somebody or it's lost here in the office, which is a good possibility. But I looked everywhere for the motor. So this it'll take a little bit longer to get this thing ready. Uh, I bought the same brand of motor that I have on my FX61, which is a Turner G SK3 Aerostar. And I'm, this one is going to be a 3542 size in a, um, it's either eight, I believe it's either 800 or 1000 KV, I can't remember. So I'll put a little notation here just to tell you which one it is. Uh, so I run the same size motor or a slightly smaller motor 
in my FX61 I want a 35, 36 size motor and a 1050, 1050 kV in my other wing. So, so guys, I'm so excited to get this up in the air and show you guys this airplane. It's been something I've really wanted to fly for a long time, so I'm super excited. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoy this video. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.